Vaping Q&A, episode 2. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 2 of the Vaping Q&A. I'm Vaping Vic, and today we're just going to get into some vaping and non-vaping related questions. I'm going to fire up the answers. If you have a question, put it in the comments below. Um, starting in the next one, the question of the week, the best question of the week, we'll get some sort of prize or something. Eh? Yeah, how do you like that? Um, thank you for the response to the first one. We're going to carry on until you're all bored of it. <laughs> uh, so let's get stuck in. Today uh, I'm vaping while answering the questions. I'm vaping on my Battlestar. What's this? A smart Battlestar 200 watt mod. And I've got my uh, Pyro RDTA from Vandy Vape on top. Let's get stuck into it. John Vapes says, uh, Vaping addiction is never talked about. Do you feel vaping is less or equally addictive as smoking? If you woke up tomorrow and could not vape, what do you think would happen on a psychological level? Uh, if you woke up tomorrow intent on quitting vaping, what do you think would happen? Saying it doesn't matter would be a bit of a cop-out. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, so heavy question, heavy question to start off. Um, in my opinion, vaping is easier to quit than smoking. I say that purely because two reasons from a scientific point of view there are far less chemicals in vaping than smoking i believe there's 500 chemicals in one cigarette and uh, your body is not just dependent on nicotine it has grown dependent on those other 500 chemicals that are in those cigarettes and so you know that's why even when when you're quitting smoking for vaping even if you're on the highest nick possible, you're still getting some craving. It's still tough that first four or five days uh, converting to vaping. And it's because your body's missing all those additional chemicals. Also, the nick strength of a cigarette is way higher than a vape. Um, you know, I think they reckon it's around twenty, the equivalent of a 26 mg uh, vape. So, you know, with every drag on a cigarette, you are getting a big hit of nicotine. Um and as as a vapor, I'm sure most vapors will agree. Over time, you ha your nick level has dropped with your vaping style. So, I mean, I'm on. If I'm doing anything cloudy, I'm on three mg. If I'm doing anything a bit more chilled out, lower wattage, I'm on six mg. So, but that is still way lo lower than, uh, you know, a cigarette. So, I think it would be easier. Uh, overall, overall, I believe it is way easier to quit vaping than it is to quit smoking. I think it's a really good transitional step. Uh, if you're intent on not doing either, I definitely think smoking, then vaping for a bit, and then weaning yourself of vaping is a definite option. Let's not forget as well, vaping is not harmful. They cannot find any reason or anything so far in any research that suggests that vaping is in any way harmful. So, <laughs> so, so you know, let's not get too hung up on it. If you enjoy it, there's nothing to say it's harmful at all at this point. If it's not hurting your pocket too much, enjoy vaping if you're enjoying vaping. Um, what would happen if I tried to quit? Um, uh, one thing I would say is I can now go quite a long time without vaping before I go a bit mad. The, just this morning, went to the shops, uh, got some things, didn't take a vape with me. I uh, must have gone three and a half hours, four hours without a vape. Now, if that had been back in the smoking days with a cigarette, I would have been climbing the walls at that point. Uh, so, so you know, it's really positive. I do think if I had to, if I really had to, I, I could quit, uh, quit vaping. Uh, I don't want to. It wouldn't be as much fun as just carrying on vaping but I think I could I think I genuinely think I could at this point um, and so that's my my general general take on it okay so Mark's music says hello hello from across the pond do you have any recommend recommendations for single coil squonking RDAs single coil squonking RDAs yes I do yes I do now um, there's obviously two sides there's the uh, higher end and the lower end in terms of budget single coil RDAs for squonking I really like the uh, Coil Art D Pro for single coils I think that's a, a quality little RDA that I still use to this day and really enjoy there's also the Pulse 22 from Vandy Vape not the 24 the 24 is more aimed at dual coils but the 22 one uh, I think is very uh, acceptable with single coils 
Uh, by no means a perfect RDA, the 22, in my opinion, but I do think it works nicely with single coils on a budget. And then you're going into the higher end. So you've got your Nardas, your Hakus, uh, your things like that. There's also, uh, on back on the cheaper end, there's the Gorge RDA as well. Uh, there's a plethora. Yeah, there is. There's a nice selection. Um, so, yeah, I, if, if you're on a budget, go for the uh, D-Pro from Coilart. That's my shout. I, I really like that RDA. Uh, super easy to build. Uh, you can put dual coils in if you want. But uh, I think it works really nice with a big beefy single coil. Uh, so that is that one. Toot Toot says, Hi Vic, what's the oldest vape setup that you still use? Ah. The oldest vape setup that I still use. Okay, so I've got a few. I've got a few, I've got a few that are still in rotation. I have my Troll RDTA with the uh, Phantom. Mech mod from Watofo. I think it's a nice matchy setup. It's just a 22 millimeter mech. Uh, I've always sort of just enjoyed the form factor for a budget mech. I think uh, the Phantom is really good, and the Troll was one of you know the first budget RDAs to use that velocity style deck. So um, a, a nice little thing. You know that's not mega old, I guess, but I'm still using it. I'm still a huge fan of this as well. Uh, the Segeli Fu Chai 200 watt. Uh, the Segeli. Segeli went through a golden age of regulated box mods. Uh, they did the Segeli 100, the 150, the 200, and then the 200 Fuchai. And uh, I don't know how old this must be now. Two years old, something like that. Um, and I'm still using it. I, I love the feel, the form factor. It's just super reliable. It's good on batteries. Um, you know, sometimes all you want is a vape, isn't it? And um, the Fuchai 200 is just an absolute screamer in that respect. Um, I've also got this again not exactly sure how old this is but um, oh, it must be a, it must be a, they must have been out a while now the Hexome 2.5 uh, I have a Hexome 2.5 uh, I know they've done the the V3 now but I think the 2.5 has been out a very long time uh, and again even before that, there was, uh, you know, there was ones in a very similar style to this. The Hex V2 was, uh, you know, that was that's a good few years ago now. And these are just solid, um, solid, solid, variable voltage, uh, no regulation, <laughs> no regulation other than the variable voltage on here. You know, when the battery depletes, the voltage does go down. Uh, just a little dual series uh, box mod, just really well made. Uh, really like the Hex Ohm. And that's got the... Um, v2 velocity on top again that's been out ages now but um, another rda i absolutely love i think that's it to be honest for uh, old stuff you know obviously being a reviewer a lot of new stuff comes through the door and i ob i am obligated to use it before uh, making a video for it so uh, there we go you know there's some absolute brilliant golden oldies and on the facebook group that i do with my friends uh, for the ideal ohm show which is on thursday nights at 9 p.m live um you know we're doing this thing called the hall of fame and the hall of fame uh, is a dedicated thing where we are putting items in the hall of fame that have you know historical vaping value and are still good today you know and things like that so you know you've got some really nice stuff going in there uh, from the past that's still very good now you know and whenever we select something to go in the hall of fame we still see all the hand checks of all the people still using that kit you know because it's just so good so yeah some things are timeless in my opinion uh, so there we go okay i'll move on to a few off topic ones dave apes says dave apes says hi richard do you keep up to date with current boxers if so who do you have your eye on uh yeah Big time, huge boxing fan. Uh, absolutely love boxing. Uh, I follow it. I've, I don't miss a fight, uh, to, to put it uh, mildly. Um, current boxers, uh, everyone. My favourite boxers that are still active current boxers right now are James DeGale. Uh, I, I, I think he's the best British boxer around at the moment. Um, you know, I'm a bit of a style stylist. You know, I'm a bit of a romantic with the boxing, so I really like technique over power and things like that. Uh, you know, so obviously Anthony Joshua's rocking it out. You've got James DeGale, who I think is just the classiest, yeah, UK boxer right now, uh, and he is actually number one in his division according to all the you know official people, Ring Magazine and what have you. Uh, so there we go. We've got him. You've got George Gross fighting Jamie Cox. Actually, when you watch this, he will have fought Jamie Cox. Here's my prediction for the Groves-Cox fight. Uh, I expect a Groves 
to knock out Cox in... Well, not knock out, but it, 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 it'll be stopped. Uh, and it'll be a win for George Groves in the middle round, 6-7-8. Uh, technical stoppage in 6-7-8. Let's see if that turns out to be correct. Um, so, yeah, you've got Groves, you've got DeGale, you've got Joshua... Uh, you have got all the up and coming boxes as well. Uh, Dubois, uh, Yardy, or Yard. Uh, you've got some real talents there. Uh, hopefully, Tyson Fury makes a comeback. I uh, don't know if he will. He's got a lot of weight to lose. Uh, who else have you got? You've got Crawler Burns was on just the other week. Watch that. Uh, yeah, oh God, it's, it's too long a list of current boxers. I'll follow all of boxing. Can't wait to see Amir Khan back in the ring. Apparently, you know, he's fighting in December or January. You've got Hey Bellew rematch as well. Uh, can't wait to see that. Uh, I, As long as David Hay is fit, I expect to see a very different fight. I'm hoping he comes in way lighter than he did last time and actually comes at Bellew just over the cruiserweight limit and they actually fight as two slightly overweight cruiserweights rather than them both pretending to be heavyweights. David Hay, people forget David Hay was the unified cruiserweight champion of the world uh, and, you know, let's face it, Tony Bellew is not and never will be. So I would like to see David Hay beat Bellew at his own game down at just over that cruiserweight limit rather than blowing himself up and slowing himself down i would like to see him come in a, a nice lean david hay and just blow him out of the water but uh he, but not taking anything away from uh, tony bellew very slick fighter for his weight division so you know it'll be another cat and mouse thing i think but if as long as david hay's fit i do expect him to win that one rob merrick says if you shaved off <laughs> if you shaved one eyebrow or, or eyebrow off by accident would you draw it back on Shave the or shave the other one off. Um, I would shave the other one off. Uh, two reasons. I don't think you'd be conning anyone with a one drawn on eyebrow. I think people would spot that and notice that. Also, there's maintenance there, isn't there? Uh, you're going to have to keep redrawing that on. And I don't even remember to gel my hair in the morning. So the idea of having time to draw on an eyebrow is m madness. Uh, yeah, if you shave them... If you, if you lost one, shave the other off. At least they will grow back together, you know? Um, no, uh, yeah, I would definitely shave one eyebrow off. Uh, Savage Model says, what is the best microwave rice on the market? Uh, if you watch the Ideal Home Show, you will know I have a bit of uh, a love affair with microwave rice. Uh, I used to have it for lunch every day. I still have it way too much. Um, okay, so the best microwave rice rice on the on the market okay now it i don't believe that one brand is dominant in the microwave rice sector uh, a lot of people would say uncle ben's is the best microwave rice and maybe overall it is maybe pound for pound it is but i actually think certain brands do certain flavors better so uh uncle ben's has got a really good spicy mexican rice they've got a really nice mushroom rice uh but uh for example tilda do a really nice uh they do some really nice coconut rice ones uh they do a nice mushroom rice as well uh they do a uh, fiery hot rice as well tilda um so there's a lot of good choice out there uh check out the um peppers the mixed pepper uh uncle ben's rice as well that's quite a treat if you get your hands on that uh, so yeah so there is loads of beautiful microwave rices i don't think there is a dominant best uh best in class uh rice although if you had the full supermarket to yourself uh, but only one packet to go for uh, depending on what you were throw you were eating with it obviously but uh, the spicy mexican rice from uncle ben's is very nice indeed so that's all we've got time for uh let's uh let me know. Let me know in the comments. Uh, please, please, please ask a comment in the question uh, in the comment section. Please ask a question if you have one, vaping or non-vaping related. Uh, if you don't have a question right now, let me know. Do you want the next one to be recorded like this or live? Let me know. Uh, I'll be Vic, and I'll see you again soon.